welcome everyone. Um, I had a little glitch. I didn't hit that record um, button, but we're back for part two with Dr. Nisha Manik. And uh, she's, uh, if you go through part one, which you have to go through and see, you'll get her whole history of being with, um, studying under William Tiller. She's a uh, uh, rheumatoi rheumatologist. Um, rheumatologist, Carolyn. Rheumatologist, <laughs> there we go. She's a rheumatologist doctor, but like really a information and integrative medicine. She's internationally known. So she's going to go, um, we're going to start and she's going to kind of do a review of part one quickly. And then we're going to go in to the part two. And one thing I wanted to bring out, she's written a fabulous book called Bridging Science and Spirit. And um, you can see I've got underlined it like crazy. And this book is available on my website. I put it on the home page. So uh, several people have said they got in to get it. They've even said, whoa, they wish she was their doctor. So it's just like, it, the part one is really great. And so, um, and also when you go in to get the book, be sure and leave a review because then that just helps us push um, to make more aware every, uh, to people about how physics and consciousness are starting to bridge because her book, Bridging Science and Spirit, is about that. It's about intention and conditioning space. So welcome, Dr. Manny. <laughs> Good morning, Carol. It's a delight to be with you. And I'm so glad we're recording this now. <laughs> So, you know, um, we have so much to discuss and cover. We'll try our best. And what I thought I would do is just go a little bit over part one to set the tone to uh, if people haven't watched part one, then they would be up to speed in a quick way. And then we'll get into the real juice, the real nuggets of what Tiller found, because it's really fabulous and really a clue to how powerful human beings or homo sapiens really are. And this is Tiller, William Tiller, my mentor. And, you know, he is a teacher worth worthwhile studying. He is a Rishi which is a word in Sanskrit, which says a teacher of the highest order. And why do I say that? Tiller is rare because not only is he excellent in conventional science, mathematics and physics, he's a material scientist. So he knows special knowledge of how to create new materials. He knows the behavior of atoms and molecules and how to manipulate them to create new things. But he was also an engineer. So an engineering mindset connects the dot. They really bridge things that we, you and I cannot possibly see. And this is what's so striking to me about Tiller when I first met him. I said, how do you put that and that together? But ah, that's just <laughs> it. That's just it. He wasn't enclosed by an invisible cage. This was all, all boundaries were open for him. That's really crucial. Because in my world, as a medical doctor, we had chemistry and biochemistry, and I was locked into the body, mm. this little thing, this material right. thing. And this is the other gift that Tiller really brings out, and really I admire. He is a Rishi, because he is really a meditator. He is somebody who gives great deal of love uh, to the scripture, to contemplative and meditative practices. He'd been doing that for decades when I met him and I could feel it, okay? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you meet someone, we, are, we have a way of sensing. Mm -hmm. When somebody enters the room and you know they're up, you know, pumper uppers or drainer downers, right. Tiller is absolutely a pumper upper, okay? Um, so this is William Tiller, he's now 93. Uh, retired in Scottsdale. He was doing active research until about a year ago, which is astonishing to gather and generate data, mm -hmm. analyze it, do mathematics. He was still doing it, but now he's quietened down quite a bit. This is his book, Sacroenergetic Science. And Carol, I would en encourage your followers to get this book also mm -hmm. because they can read it along with Bridging Science and Spirit. This is heavy going. But I can tell you there's great rewards in contemplating the ideas. They will not make sense. I promise you, 
they will if you sit with them. It's like a self-revelation process. And once you do that, that the knowledge is activated. It's not dead knowledge and dead facts that you're collecting inside, but really it is knowledge that is active, alive. Now, nobody can take that away from you. I really mean that, okay? I've like, that, when, for years I've like read, tried to read, and it is like you say, it's really dense, but mm -hmm. you know, and it takes, so that's why I love your book. Like you could read that, then go, you know, it's, it is a bridge, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, many readers have also said that I couldn't make sense of this or this. I just let it go and go back and then, a aha moment would mm -hmm. come now it's theirs mm -hmm. and nobody can predict that you know some people have said this little formula was so amazing and and literally they almost dropped to their knees and i'm astonished to hear things like that all i know is that there is an offering here that tiller has for the world because it is part of our evolutionary um stage we are seeing the old world pass away and we must not cling to it okay we are ready and he's showing us a new way by our consciousness so copper this particular book um i have mentioned the hawk and scale of consciousness which is a, a scale of measuring consciousness it's based on muscle testing or applied kinesiology i've tried it it works okay in my experience, this works. I encourage you all to read David Hawkins' work also. And when I looked at this particular work of Tiller and calibrate, the, I use the word calibration means where on that scale is uh, Tiller's work really fall into? Mm -hmm. Because mind you, was he a charlatan or was he the truth? All right, test it. Don't take my word for it. You've got to start really testing information. Test CNN, test Fox, test the newspapers. I do it. I really do. And I've stopped subscribing to almost everything. We do. It cleaned like, out my I, life. Oh, because I'm a dowser. We make partners, you know? And so yes. when something big comes up, we ask them blind testing, you know, what their answer is. So we double check it. But it's so true. You can check all of this. Yeah, you know, I, I'm absolutely, too, you know, you feel it. And not only that, you know, when I first learned of this concept of getting to the truth, to get to the integrity of something mm -hmm. um, in my world, you do multiple lab tests and imaging, but we still don't get the answer. I mean, this is really true. And you're sort of debating. And then I realized with Hawkins work, if you are sensitive enough and ask the right question, you'll be given the next direction. All right, so um, this is a wonderful book because on the Hawkins scale, uh, 400s on the Hawkins scale is the world of the intellect. This is where we uh, decipher, analyze, do statistical analysis and that kind of thing and arrive to a conclusion, but it is limited. It is linear knowledge. Mm -hmm. Tiller is way into the heart. This is, he's gone over the 400s into the 500s and very few scientists do that. Mm. David Bohm, Carl Jung are the others, by the way. Mm. So Tiller has really gone into the heart area, but he still talks like a physicist. That's the issue we have, right? And so this is why Bridging Science and Spirit was written to make his work accessible mm. to not just ordinary people. We're not all ordinary. We're all extraordinary. We have extraordinary minds. So we're just saying, remind us of our gifts. Mm. And Tiller does that in a science way. So I do encourage this book. And you know, Tiller, um, this is his philosophy. If you are, if you have discovered something, then it is your responsibility to humankind to make it accessible, draw a bridge from this knowledge to spirit. Ultimately, our home is spirit. Ultimately, my friends, our home is spirit, okay? We can have this limited experience in our brief time on planet Earth. We're having it right now together. We're having a satsang together. We're sharing together. 
ultimately it's spirit and we have to go there ultimately you can have all the distractions you want so tellers was really let's use science to build the bridge of knowledge and data it's supported by good experimental data all the way to spirit and so tiller's work gives <clears throat> meaning to that ancient tradition that human consciousness our spiritual selves are magnificent jesus has said we are made in the image of god all right and we really are because consciousness is father consciousness is giving birth consciousness is our spiritual self but we have work to do we have to refine it so when i was at mayo clinic you know as a physician um i was so into the science of medicine and all of this and it served really well up to a point i felt a gap i couldn't ignore it there was this other spiritual side which was so missing and I did integrative medis medical training, so it really expanded my toolbox into lifestyle, into um, nutrition and botanicals. We're into chemistry still. I think we have a lot more to do, and that's where Tiller comes in, because he really showed me that the gaps can be filled, and they can be filled not with woo-woo, but with real science. Mm -hmm. So I left Mayo. And I joined Dr. Tiller in Arizona, and I used to meet with him every Thursday, and we would have tea from 9 to 11 a.m. He was very punctual, would come in, I would have tea ready, a little snack, and we would start our sessions. I recorded these on flip camera, so I have hours and hours and hours of video that you know, barely scratched. I mean, it's, it was remarkable. We would discuss everything from thermodynamics, coherence, entropy, uh, medicine, Amazon best-selling books to what's the you know, spiritual practices. And we had a very free exchange. And that was really a gift because he wasn't superior to me. Mm -hmm. We were absolutely together exploring something quite unique. And I won't forget that. It was really quite magnificent for somebody of him, of his stature to say, welcome, I'm going to teach you, but you better have the integrity also. Mm -hmm. So there we were, <clears throat> Thursdays with Tiller, is that what I used to call this? This is a cover of my book. So, you know, Tiller is asking really this magnificent question. How do you get a connection between human consciousness and its effect in a measurable way you want to see it because it's one thing to say well hold good intention hold positive thoughts hold affirmations i'm not talking about all those things i'm talking about a real mathematical connection that can be tested and reproduced now that is science mm -hmm. that right. is now worthy of attention so I'm not going into quantum mechanics because that is a very good science, but it's quantum theory. It's not complete in its current stage yet. And we've talked about observer, if not we, but there has been this notion about observer effects and how right. things change when the instruments are brought in to the uh, double slit, slit experiments. There are many, many, um, you know, interpretations and uh, it has been looked at and puzzled over many, many times. But Teller says, let's leave that. It's fine. What we need to do is actually measure this in a lab. Mm -hmm. Quantum mechanics isn't about big instruments in the CERN and Switzerland. We don't have that. We have limited funding in a <laughs> physics lab. Okay, How are you going to do this? Mm -hmm. And without brain imaging, no MRI, this is, this is a new science protocol. Mm -hmm. This was very, very courageous and very, very unique, honestly. And when I saw this first time, I have to say I was very skeptical. But when I went into Tiller's labs and really sat with this material, it was an aha that, oh my God, this works. This absolutely works. So the first thing is your intention your intention is invisible. It is something you hold in your heart and your mind, 
-hmm. but it is an invisible intention is a process of creation. So in Teller's world as a mathematician and a physicist, he rendered his uh, intention on, on paper. He wrote it out. He wrote it out. So the first thing I wanna tell all of your followers, Carol, is you want something, write it out. Mm -hmm. I want to win the lottery. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, everyone to their own. So Tiller said, okay, he's a material scientist. He understands materials. How can he, he chose water to test his intention. Water is very familiar to us and water is intrinsic to life, right? And water is neutral in pH. He knew that the water pH is related to hydrogen ions. OK, it's a physical thing, a physical term that he used. And then he wrote it out. We'll come to that in a moment. But notice in this cartoon what he wrote at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't understand the importance, the sheer beauty of the Tiller Protocol until I wrote Bridging Science and Spirit. And then it hit me so hard when my editor pointed it out. Mm -hmm. My editor said, thy will be done. That's the Lord's prayer, Nisha. Okay. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I used to see Tiller write. He'd say, Nisha, I've got this intention statement for, uh, you know, autistic children. And he had one for my patient uh, to heal this patient with arthritis. And he would always end it with thy will be done. And I thought it was very nice and very poetic and it's all nice. Mm -hmm. And when I wrote the book and then I read the Lord's prayer, one really realizes what Tiller was doing. Mm -hmm. That even in this action of invisible into visible physical thing in this creation process, he gave it to God. Mm -hmm. Show me the truth of my intention. Show me the truth of my lab protocol, not the protocol of some Stanford or some editor journal or mm -hmm. some funding agency. He gave it to God. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done, not the editor's will or the funding agency. <laughs> and you know, this, this came later to me. And this is how science and all of our spiritual growth is. There are periods of almost like static. Am I growing really? What am I doing? What am I doing? You know, it's all nice. I thought I was doing lots of science, but the growth was happening. Mm -hmm. And in an instant, when that editor said, it's the Lord's prayer. And I went to the Lord's prayer and I was, I remember that day, I literally sat in silence because it came like a force mm -hmm. that what Tiller had done was to give even this creative, this pro science protocol in the service of thee, O oh Lord, show me. And so I encourage everyone, whether you want something, you want to be made happy or your health, thy will be done. Ask to be shown the truth in your particular situation. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very beautiful, and, and there's no separation of science and spirit. There's H2 molecules, H2O molecules, your hydrogen ions, <laughs> and he's written that exactly. will be done. Mm -hmm. Right. No separation in science and spirit in the Tiller world. And that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. That's how it should be. So the intention statement for water, it's a little longer than this, but he literally wrote it like a physics statement increase or decrease the hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 10, which is a whole pH up or down, okay? Thy will be done, okay, literally. And then he would sign his name and he would date it. And then he would come back to it quite a few times to revise it, does it feel right? Does it feel right? He would tweak it a bit here, tweak it a bit there, but always to the extent that it felt right in his heart. And how do you know when something feels right in your heart? It's a very good question. This is a very good question. How do you know completion? How do you know 
that your creation is complete. Mm -hmm. And it's a good practice to ask that question and Tiller said, I feel peace. Mm -hmm. There's a feeling inside of a certain settling, which he calls peace. Right. All right. So whenever you have a fork in the road and an unsettling, once you choose a pathway and you choose your creative process and you're wondering, is this correct? If it brings you peace, my friend, you're on the right track. Okay. You know, it's so it's your higher self. It's mm -hmm. so interesting in dowsing. It's one of the main things because you have to ask the right question and you have mm -hmm. to write it out and have all the parameters because your dowsing will only be as good as the intention that you wrote. Yeah. The motivation uh, guides the outcome. You're right. So your questions have to be pristine. Go and look at the question again. Tiller looked at his statement in a form. It's like a question in a sense. Increase or decrease this hydrogen ion? Will it work? Will it be worthy? But he wrote, thy will be done as a prayer that mm -hmm. show me the truth of this. Mm -hmm. Can my intention change something of water under controlled conditions? And really it is a courageous experiment. Um, but there was a kind of faith in him. There was um, not so much doubt or skepticism, but a kind of playful courage, like a child. Mm -hmm. They go tumbling into something. That's what he was doing, playing. But with a grave, um, grave sort of, that this outcomes could change humanity. So I am taking this seriously. It's not all play, but again, with a sense of play. Do you know what I mean? It's a kind exactly. of very subtle balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So an how we, yeah. Sorry? An innocence. There was an innocence. There was a curiosity. Mm -hmm. There was a curiosity. So we know um, from a lot of work, this is old science, 1960s, 70s, the pair lab, that is the Princeton uh, research labs um, of uh, Brenda Dunn mm -hmm. and Robert Yon, they've looked at this many, many times that human consciousness and human intention can impact a physical object. They use number, random number generators and human intention can impact um, a, run, a random number generator in a direction that you want, mm -hmm. okay? without touching the instrument or the machine or whatever. So there is no physical touching. And yet we know for by means human consciousness can impact a machine. All right. It does that. Mm -hmm. And it is statistically significant. So Tiller says, okay, I've written my statement that I feel peaceful about it. I feel right that this is okay. Now I'm going to hold my intention, but do I keep holding it for half an hour, one hour, 10 hours, two weeks, months? Well, you have to be very, uh, not, you know, you have to be sensible about intention. And that's where his genius comes in. He knew that human consciousness can impact a machine. Well, why don't we try with deep meditation to hold that one water target intention and see if we can impact or imprint as he called it a device this device is just a simple thing believe me mm -hmm. um it's like it's really now it was built in the 1970s no sorry 1990s he designed this little box it measures about seven inches long you know half an inch thick it's um it's got a simple circuit inside and he said okay what if objects and you could use a crystal you could use a shirt or a tie or anything he said it, the object is not the question the question is first of all can the device be impacted and he says yeah it can be from all of this other princeton's work stanford research international's work we know this this does happen mm -hmm. but will it store the information for a stable period of time Stable period means a few months, so you can do experiments. Right. Mm. So that's the first thing. Will it impact? And the answer was, yeah, it pretty much will, will do that. Number two, 
Will it store the information? And third, now you can use that device to impact something else because it broadcasts the information mm. like a laser, okay? Mm -hmm. So human intention, this is one thing I want your followers to know. Your consciousness is powerful enough to impact a machine. I've seen this again and again in medicine. I've had people with rheumatoid arthritis, they're lab workers or pharmacy workers, and they'll say, you know what? I come to my office and I prime the machine. The next table keeps breaking down, but I talk to my machine and it <laughs> never breaks down. Of course it doesn't. I've done that with my Jeep in sub-zero temperatures. Come on, Jeep, we got to start. So I think we have this capacity to impact a machine and for those who really get it, you know, and they're practicing this, this is normal for them. This is very, very, healers do this all the time, you know, with crystals and pendulums, they're dowsing and they go, oh, I know this crystal's totally right and it's holding my intention. They feel it. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a subjective sense also. It's radically subjective. So Tiller took this very simple device at his Stanford labs and he went into deep meditation deep meditation and read out this statement, increase the hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 10, thy will be done. And we, he would hold that intention for half an hour, no other thoughts. Mm. Now, when I first tried this, Carol, this is difficult. <laughs> my mind in the first 10 seconds was here and then there. And in fact, Tiller told me, Nisha, this isn't really your game. <laughs> I think, you know, it's okay. You tried, kiddo. I, I think, um, you know, just try to understand the concepts and, and keep, keep at it. Mm -hmm. But I think, and you need to really work on your, you know, contemplative. He would just gently nudge me that keep doing this. Right. It's fine. Because once you start on a meditation pathway, it isn't overnight. Mm. There's a lot of crap that needs to come up and solve. Crap comes up and it gets resolved. Mm. You know, so it can take a few decades, but it's well worth it. It's mm. well worth it. Do it, do it, do it. Okay. If there's one other thing I want to tell people, please use your favorite scripture, Bible, Psalms, A Course in Miracles, the Gita, many, many tools are available to us. Truth is ever ready to be discovered. There's no mystery. Truth is there open for us to link with it and to discover. Mm -hmm. So he uses this device and they, you know, he said, yeah, I felt imprinted. It was subjective. And uh, again, I thought, well, I don't know, what's the, what's the need for this? I mean, oh, come on, what's the need for this? <laughs> but he says, Nisha, how are you, how are you gonna test this protocol, your intention? We don't know the time, okay? And actually, I'm glad he did this because on the one hand, not only did he show that human intention on yet another lab does impact a machine, but number two, that machine goes on to do that intention. It is a repository of human intention and subtle energies. That's important. Now, I realize I'm using certain words that we have not covered, but I encourage you to go to the book because there's so much we could have week-long conferences on this, really. So he took the imprinted device. It was sent to another lab in Minnesota, okay? So this is the point I wanna make, that when we have Nisha's intention, I'm like a light bulb, okay, it goes on, but it's all diffuse and there's destructive interference, not that bright, but it sort of does the job. Can't do anything much out there. It doesn't really measure anything. So <laughs> Nisha's is a light bulb, okay? But Tiller was like a laser. <laughs> this uh -huh. versus this. Focused intention. <laughs> I mean, he said, Nisha, this is a laser. And then, you know, it took me again a long time to get, get it. This is diffuse, destructive interference. Human consciousness is capable of this. Right. Laser sharp. Lasers can cut steel. Mm -hmm. 
lasers can be seen from the International Space Station and the moon. Let's get <laughs> really clear about this, okay? <laughs> so physically speaking, Carol, this is chaos. Mm -hmm. And I love the word you used. This is coherent. Right. This is coherent information 24-7 to the target, which is the water. And, you know, the laser or the device wasn't really touching the water. It was just about uh, six inches apart. The protocol is in my book. You can read it and study it but and, and go to psychoenergetic science. It's all laid out. And uh, you can read it in detail. So this um, device, imprinted device, is sending like a laser beam information, information to that glass of water, sealed, of course. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened. Honestly, look at this graph. So here we are in, in the beginning, as expected by thermodynamic rules, the pH of water, when you test it, it'll rapidly go down, okay? Mm -hmm. Because of the carbon dioxide in the air dissolves in water and makes it acidic. So the yellow band here is the equilibrium. Equilibrium means expected by science norms. Mm -hmm. And then the Minnesota lab, remember he was at Stanford, this thing, this device is sent to a lab. They don't know the, the directive of the pH, by the way, so they're blinded to it. Mm -hmm. but they switch the device on. There's a, there's a beaker of water with the pH meter electronic. And the sensitivity of that pH meter is 0 0.001 pH units. Wow. There is not a litmus paper. Right. We're talking very fine data points. Your information has to be fine, mm -hmm. exquisitely fine. Okay. So look at what happened within about, at first it took a month to two months, but look at what happened to the intention going up by a, a one pH unit. Wow. I mean, when I looked at this, I said, there is no way that this right. can happen. It's so Come precise. On. Huh? It's so precise. It was very precise. This is just one example. He's repeated this and repeated it, and, and other labs did it too. Um, the key always is this is the scientist um, coherent inside? Because when they try to replicate this, if they're like, you know, I mean, like Nisha all over the place, well, this isn't going to work. And then you can't call it a failure. Right. The protocol involves the human. Mm -hmm. The protocol is Tiller himself. Mm -hmm. It's his consciousness. And that's really important because we think in consciousness studies, we put, um, you know, monks and all nice people in a MRI machine, that doesn't really help us. I'm telling you, mm. <laughs> okay. It gives us enough data to say, yes, meditation will change your frontal lobes, okay? I suppose that's good. It's like, I'm gonna lift weights and my bicep is gonna be really strong. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But I still want us to look at this graph because it tells us something that your invisible intention stored in this device is now acting like a laser beam and making changes to that target mm -hmm. in a measurable way. It's reproducible. This is really fantastic. And, it and helped, by the way, right? this held. Sorry? The, the, this held, this one pH they raised, it stayed for a couple it months. It stayed, right? exactly. It stayed. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the, the material was changed. Mm -hmm. The material was changed. And he did the same with decreasing pH. Again, you know, it does its equilibrium thing and then it would, it would work. And he did it with all different kinds of water, even use Avion water, purified water, distilled water, because we thought maybe the minerals in there, the precipitating, I mean, there are many things to consider. Remember, he's a material scientist. He really was exquisite about his materials, how he sourced them, purified, which company, how he did it. Honestly, it's all, it's all there. It's very well documented um, in the science papers and they're published. So they're peer reviewed and published. 
So this is an example of a pH reducing device and you can see it worked even there. Mm -hmm. So he went on to show that intention can actually change human enzymes. This is alkaline phosphatase, which is an enzyme that is in the liver and bones. Okay, it's liver and bone health. And enzymes are the workhorses of the body because this is where your chemical reactions are started by enzymes and they're held by the enzymes. And then they, you know, you get all the benefits, all the energy and ATP and your, my muscles are working and I can do all these funky maneuvers. Mm -hmm. But the enzyme goes back and is reused again. It, it's like a battery, okay? And like a matchstick, I should say. Like, you know, you strike a match and the enzyme is there and then uh, matchstick may not be the best example, but anyway, <laughs> it, it is the workhorses of the body. And he showed that intention actually increases the efficiency of the enzyme in the Petri dish. Wow. It was in vitro. By how much? If I give you an example, if you have five molecules of alkaline phosphatase, Tiller's intention within a week or so, a week or so increased it to six. So, wow. you know, you're, you, you got an extra molecule, like pulling, like six mm -hmm. horses doing the work of five, you know, I mean, right. it's really moving along. Imagine what this does for your body's efficiency. Yeah. Imagine wow. what this does to your chemical reactions and your turmeric and your vitamins and all your calcium that everybody wants to take. Just imagine. Mm -hmm. Intention has this power to regulate your human body. Okay, it does. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to show that fruit flies, he did a whole living system. And fruit flies are the biological superstars because um, it has a very short uh, life cycle. And within two weeks from the egg, it matures to a mature adult fruit fly. And you can study in the lab very quickly chemicals, um, all kinds of things, light, circadian rhythms. Fruit fly is like you can really study biology very, very efficiently. Mm -hmm. So Tiller teamed up with Michael Cohane at Stanford. And Michael, Dr. Cohane is a biologist and he, uh, he knows fruit flies and they teamed up together and set up a protocol to see can Tiller's intention benefit fruit flies? And this is very cool when Tiller told me about this experiment. And he said, Nisha, you know, I really didn't want to harm the fruit fly. <laughs> Imagine that. He's again, yeah. do you see how he's talking? Right. He's not talking about in, in, in medicine, when we do dog experiments and zebra fish experiments and the mouse model and the monkey model and this model and that. We, we don't talk like that. Right. This is a physicist whose consciousness was so amazing and so refined. Mm -hmm. He said, I am going to help this fruit fly to the extent that we do not harm them. Mm -hmm. And I will increase their ATP production so they mature faster. Happier fruit flies make more <laughs> fruit flies. More generations. And, that. <laughs> and Michael Cohen said, Dr. Tiller, I have doubts that this would ever work. I don't think so. And so Michael Cohen became a, I mean, you know, he, he co-wrote papers and a book, wow. Conscious Creation. Yeah. yeah, Conscious Creation, The Emergence of a New Physics. Uh, so Michael Cohen is a um, author. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's push, he's, he's asking his two sons, and maybe I'm giving too much information here, but Dr. Cohen wants his uh, boys to learn Tiller physics. Well, so yeah. he says, because this is the new way. This is where the young minds need to take the foundation that Tiller has written out in mathematics that we know how to do this. Mm -hmm. This isn't a mystery. We know we can impact life systems, human body, water. We are capable of far more than we think. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we're just scratching the surface. Right. So, yeah. So this is the juice. And I know, I don't know what time, what time are we, Carol? Yeah, that's why I, I got up to go get my clock because the time is done. 
It's 11.50. Do you, can you go till 12? Yes. Okay. Yes, let's I'll go till 12. 12. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see how much we can get through in, uh, in the next 10 minutes. Okay. So this is the juice. This is what are the physical conditions? We have said human intention, focused with meditation, leave your doubts behind, write the intention in a physical way, revise it until you're peaceful about it. But here's the thing, what was really going on in Tiller's lab, because this was being sent to Minnesota, and they were measuring not only the target, but they were monitoring the lab space itself. Mm. And they found something very, very odd in the labs, okay? Because whenever you do experiments of this sort and looking at pH, you want to know the ambient uh, conditions of the air temperature, those sorts of things, right. currents, all that. They were being monitored in the lab space because, you know, water is subject to so many influences. Mm -hmm. You really need to define those things. So Tiller was very, very rigorous in measuring the lab conditions. And then they noticed something really, really odd. Because as they measured the lab conditions, they noticed that the air temperature probes are situated around the lab were almost vibrating wow. up and down, up and down, up and down, three degrees of centigrade. This isn't a wow. tiny little random, this is a huge signal, okay? Right. It wasn't related to day and night. It wasn't related to air conditioning coming on. It wasn't re related to winter and summer. This went on for four to five years. They wow. were so flummoxed. What do these mean? What do, are they air currents? I mean, obviously we think, okay, I mean, you know, air, but it's too precise for an air current, you know? I mean, this is like rhythms. And then you can see the, uh, the curves. And then he also saw that not only was the air temperature, say, really rhythmically moving up and down three degrees centigrade, way above their instrument sensitivity. This was a huge signal. You're looking at a darker line, and that was the uh, water. The water temperature just poo, almost like a rhythm, uh -huh. boom, boom, uh -huh. boom, boom. It was uh -huh. bizarre. Yeah. And he and Walter Dibble says, I don't know, what does this mean? And, and so Tiller says, let's make sure it's not, not air con convection, special kinds of convection. And he says, the way to test that is if you put a fan in the room, if it was air currents, these should be obliterated right. immediately. He put a fan on and guess what happened? <laughs> Still there. Still there. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, this is not a material thing. This is not air molecules doing this. It can only mean one thing. This is the physical vacuum. Now, Physical vacuum is the space between fundamental particles. And physicists agree that the physical vacuum is the most abundant part of nature. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat this. This little thing that seems so real is only 5% of reality. 95% mm -hmm. is empty space. Right. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Empty space is where it's not really empty. It is fields. Right. This is where the fields are, okay? That's where information is. And human consciousness, according to Tiller's model, interferes with the physical vacuum and makes new materials appear. And this is physics. Mm -hmm. This is Paul Dirac's work. Paul Dirac was a British physicist and... Um, Nobel laureate in quantum mechanics. He's one of the founding fathers of quantum theories and quantum mechanics. And Dirac um, equations, and it was later proved by experiment in Caltech, California, Pasadena, that if you have energy of any sort, it could be consciousness, it could be your laser-like consciousness, interacts with the physical vacuum where there's no stuff. There's no electrons and protons. It interacts with this field mm -hmm. and out pops a field, a concentrated part of the field is what? A particle. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Now you got material stuff mm -hmm. from the invisible unmanifest comes the manifest. Sounds very biblical. It's the Dirac C, right? Dirac C, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that that's where science and spirit meet. You know, Genesis, isn't there where mm -hmm. there's a scripture where the unmanifest becomes manifest? Mm -hmm. But how does it become manifest? It's you and me, Carol. We are the manifestors. Mm -hmm. We are the consciousness, the father consciousness making it happen. So this was very, again, very exciting to me to realize the import of Dirac's work. Mm -hmm. And Dirac is not well known. Mm -hmm. If there is a hero in my books is, yes, Tiller, it's Paul <laughs> Dirac and uh -huh. a few others, but it's not Einstein. That dropped off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what Tiller did. He took those. You got four minutes. Carol, if, if you don't mind, shall I go a little bit more? Because oh, I would love it. No, it's so okay. interesting. <laughs> but we haven't covered the Buddha's relics, and that will take an hour. Well, maybe, maybe, like, in, maybe like in a month or so, we could come back and do something. Let's do that. Because, because the that's so relics... like, fabulous and all the stuff you did with the Dalai Lama. And, yeah. Yes. We could do you that. See, like the relics. Month. The relics are such a high level of information yeah. that it requires it requires um, a great deal of receptivity. Right. It really does require a great deal of love, gratitude, and receptivity because Buddha has left devices. These are devices. The relics are devices. Tiller uses a plastic box, but the Buddha, mm -hmm. a very high consciousness, has left devices that still survive today in our world. And it requires, and I have put a whole you know, part to this, but I realized that when I'm talking, there is so many, there is so many little nuances that I want to communicate to you. Your know, I have one of, that one picture and I keep it up and it just is like, so even digitally, like on your computer, it's still, you know, broadcasting. Yeah. Exactly. That, that you give meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Carol, you gave meaning to that holy symbol. There are many Buddhas in that picture. And it's published in a science journal of all things, you know, because wow. the reviewers said they were so moved mm -hmm. when they looked at that picture that they said, we would like, we recommend this being published. So it's right. it's in the paper. So here we are. Um, so Tiller took these, you know, um, rhythmic, uh, you might say oscillations in the lab. And then he did a mathematical technical Fourier transform, okay? It's taking these and making them into an amplitude, a spectral amplitude. It's just a mathematics. It's like saying music can be converted into certain symbols, okay? Uh -huh. So he took literally same technique Fourier mathematics and took these amplitudes and did mathematics and he found this. It's like they were nesting perfectly. Wow. The air, the water. It's like they were talking to each other. This has never been described in nature. Mm. It's, he, he, told, he told it like this. It's like the whole space was like harmonics. It was like singing. It was like pumping. And if we had the ears to hear that music... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have been like angels, I guess, because his prayerful intention did something to that space. And you, you cannot have, see it. Did you need to have the um, the little thing that they were programming? The device, yeah. Device. But, but not, not necessarily. And that's where we'll come to in okay. future that your intention in your home, it's like... Um, it's like when I pick a spot to meditate and I always pick that spot, that spot feels good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can go to your kitchen and your dining room and you can meditate in your with your own family and you can just read out scripture one line or two lines and just sit there quietly. Mm -hmm. And you're, con you're, you're actually, you're, you're, your bio field is doing its thing. You're radiating that. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful to have the contemplative and meditation practices, but leave the doubt behind and just experiment, be curious, be right. playful, okay, because you can really recreate 
the very space you're in, it can be a Himalayan cave, mm -hmm. or it can be Westminster Abbey, or it can be Nisha's kitchen. Right. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. We have created the differences, but really we are sages in training, Rishas in training. <laughs> <laughs> so this was it. The, 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 the space in Tiller's lab is fundamentally different. I'm going to leave it here, but this is the the uh, this is what I just want to point out. This is normal space, and Tiller's space is here. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Uh huh. So the first column is conventional physics. This is where we deal with normal reality. This is where Nisha's light bulb consciousness, yeah, it's sort of okayish, you know, and then we start to get some meditation and coherence within ourselves. Now we're seeing a transitional physics. And then the magic starts to happen when you have full condition space. Mm -hmm. This, wow, all bets are off because you're now in a new reality, okay? Tiller calls this reciprocal space, which is condition, it's sacred, okay? Mm -hmm. And normal space, this is where we are. This is where medical hospitals are. This is what we do. This is where chemistry is prescribed. But what if, what if we put chemistry here? Right, wow. What, what, what about the potential of anything you do? Whether you take your Tylenol, your vitamins with intention, your food, your chocolate chip cookies, your yoga studios, Starbucks, I mean, it's endless, right? Endless. Exactly. So I'm going to end it there, but by golly, Carol, we have Buddha's relics. And it's, it's um, uh, to me, that, that brings me so much joy. I don't want to hurry that. So if you <laughs> want, and I, I'm, I'm very grateful to you for giving me this chance. And I'd be happy to do um, session number three, where we can go into the devices, the relics of Buddha. That would be great. Ah, this is so interesting. I know I'm going to get a whole slew of people because it's it's so because you the way you've presented it makes it so um, helpful. You know, you can understand it. It's understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is this is part of our reality. We already know this. Mm -hmm. We know that there's certain parts of the home that you particularly like, the certain parts of the home that you might say, well, it's okay. Um, you know, I like my morning coffee in a certain way, in a certain place. And, mm -hmm. and I like it because I close my eyes and I'll read scripture. And for half an hour, I just, I'm right there. Mm -hmm. And so we begin to pay attention and we begin to be, um, to activate this knowledge in a very, very meaningful way. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, every one of you are manifestors, okay? And once we create that space, your intentions start really, you know, people have said, be careful what you wish for, okay? You can, you will, you start to really get coherent. You also know that the motivation behind your intention is refined more and more and you will change. Mm -hmm. And, and in that very aspect of changing, you know, you're making progress. Right. Just the very fact that you, so, you know, that doesn't, the red roadster, isn't that important to me anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want the red car. <laughs> I think, you know, and so on, because it's happened to me, there's an evolution mm -hmm. in my thinkingness. Exactly. Right. And, and so I embrace it and I say, okay, I, I, and I'm going to keep going and keep going. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. And we'll, we'll get together again in a month or so. You thank got you it, Carol. So Bye to everyone. Bye. Thank you. All right.